All right, Twins fans, we are back. I've been sick, and so many, many apologies, but Man About Town answer Dave Brown is back here hanging out with me. We're going to talk about the Dodgers bullying everybody, a few former Twins landing places, and some rumors of who the Twins might be interested in. This is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked On Twins. I'm your host, Brandon Warner. You can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. Thanks for making us your first listen every day on Locked On Twins. And as always, I am joined by our friend Dave Brown at Answer Dave. Brown, Dave, how are we doing this evening? Hi, Brandon. We're we're in the middle of the Christmas season, so it's lots of moving things around, getting ornaments, taking boxes, putting back boxes. Uh, but there's always some good stuff to talk about with the Twins and Major League Baseball, so we're ready to do that too. Yeah, Twins making it a little tough to drum up ideas because they're not doing anything. But uh, there's things happening around them that we'll talk about. And we still have a pretty good idea of what they will do just on their own timeline. Um, thanks for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Again, we, we appreciate our active listeners. Uh, FTL Nova giving us a thumbs up. In the comments, we also like the thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe, five-star reviews, whatever you can do to help us out. We really, really do enjoy it. And Dave, we're going to dive right in here. Um, so Tyler Glass now is on the move, and it doesn't have anything to do with the Twins. But um, he and Manuel Margot to the Dodgers for Ryan Pepio and Johnny DeLuca. Um, your initial thoughts as we kind of get a sense that the Dodgers are bullying the rest of the league. Well, it does seem like piling on the, the day of the Otani uh, press conference where he comes to Dodger stadium for the first time as a Dodger, a pre Dodger and uh, discusses kind of his uh, surgery and what his dog's name is and all those other burning questions. And then we get this uh, word. It was uh, it was news broken by people not widely known on the internet. I don't even, I don't even remember their handles, but I think it was uh, MLB nerds guys. Was it okay? Well, I guess people know them a little, but uh, other people, other than me, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Right. Well, I mean they they pretty much had the deal down. Um, yep. So good for them. It's not a, like a weird Reddit, you know, not safe for work name. That was a few years ago. That somebody like Ken Bone, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a time! Yeah, it's a very strange transitional time. Um, but Glass now is a guy who has not thrown a lot of innings. Uh, you know, a lot of that, of course, is injury related and being cautious about the injury. <laughs> um, he he hasn't had a great postseason record, but you know. Uh, I'm going to throw the old sample size wet blanket on that and say, yeah. let's give him a, a few dozen cracks at the playoffs, which is the situation he's with the, you know, in with the Dodgers now. And, you know, when he's on, he's got some of the most amazing stuff. And he looks like the guy who played Robert Oppenheimer in the atomic bomb movie. And uh -huh. it's, uh, he's got a lot going for him. He's uh, he plays chess with people in New York city. And he's just one of the, you know, he's one of those world's most interesting men types. A man about town. So he's going to find a lot of stuff to do in Los Angeles. And it's a good move for the Dodgers who, despite being, you know, they win a hundred games year after year after year, they need pitching and Otani isn't going to give that to them until next year. So, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a little, they still need pitching because Pepio was probably a guy that was going to be in the rotation. So yeah. he's a top 100 ish prospect, maybe better than that. Um, you know, I don't know what, what his future holds, but they were, you know, if they hadn't moved him in this deal or they were going to use him as a starting pitcher, and that was probably their biggest weakness. So it, this definitely addresses the, uh, the starting pitching needs of the Dodgers. I think probably they, they need to do a little bit more and we'll see what they do. 
yeah, I still kind of hate this Dodgers rotation if I'm completely honest, just because um, it's, it's unproven on the back end and injury prone on the front end. So we'll see what happens. They do have to, I believe, get an extension done contingency with the deal or a contingency with the deal. Um, what are you expecting for that deal to look like? Because if you mitigate injury risk, but also that glass now is really stinking good. I mean, is six years and 150 million off the table, do you think? Oh, no, I think that's possible. I, I also feel like, you know, it's tough because they, you know, they, they gave up some pretty good prospects, but the Dodgers have kind of other guys like this, Johnny DeLuca and, and Pepio. And um, that's one of the reasons, that's actually one of the reasons Otani went to them because they, they can churn out the pretty high level prospects too. And they're very good at development and they put a lot of resources into that. So yeah. even though these are valuable chips, uh, you know, they, they can be replaced in the, in the rotation. So, uh, okay. All that being said, um, I, you know, a few <laughs> years ago, opt outs were like the, uh, clause du jour in the contracts i would expect yeah, yeah i was thinking about that too kind of like this now where maybe deferred money is the new thing yeah maybe so i don't know if they're going to defer with glass now but um i would expect there to be some kind of opt out it may be a six-year deal with an opt out after four something to that nature and the, the money you said of uh, being pretty close so um you know that and going back to this he doesn't have a lot of innings but then again Maybe for his arm, it's a good thing he doesn't have a lot of innings. So it's a it's a double edged sword, which you don't want to stick in the arm because then that would send the guy right to the IL. So uh, be careful with those double edged swords. Yeah, no, that's that's dangerous. And where this kind of affects the Twins is the, with the deferring money and everything. The Dodgers, I mean, and maybe maybe deferring the money doesn't matter at all because they're kind of going for bo uh, full bore against the the luxury tax anyway. But it's going to shape who they pursue from this point on in the offseason, which could nudge out teams like the Twins for certain players. Um, maybe some free agent pitching. I don't know about that. But, as you know, if they get Yamamoto, which seems less likely now than I think before, or at least than I thought before, uh, they still could, you know, be in the trade market, you know, active targeting guys from, for instance, I would expect that, yes. the Marlins, et cetera. So I think there will be a ripple effect of the Dodgers being this active where it may not be a first level, first wave uh, aftershock that the Twins feel, but I think they'll still feel it at some point this offseason. Yeah. And, you know, I keep going back to free agents and, and we've sort of been told that the, that's not going to be the Twins priority. We've seen uh, Jack Flaherty sign with the Dodgers for 14 and we've seen, uh, you know, the Royals make a move, a three-year contract, similar type money with uh, with Seth Lugo. So uh, at least in terms of uh, cost, you see what the, the Twins are dealing with here. So maybe this is one of the reasons why they, you know, I mean, that's it's not like an excessive amount of money, but I can see where it might give them pause and why they maybe came into the offseason more in a, in a trade mode, given the, the pieces that they have to move rather than buying uh, the pitchers, but they're probably going to, they're probably going to buy at least one somewhere, maybe in the bullpen and maybe it'll be closer to spring training. And we see what kind of price it's going to cost. It's going to be a pretty penny. Quick question before we go to break, who is better at player development, the Rays or the Dodgers? Because honestly, I think they're both really, really good. Yeah, they both are really good. Um, yeah. I, I think the Dodgers are, uh, maybe a little behind the Rays, but I, I just I get the feeling and, and the proof will be in the pudding of the, the players that we see coming up. Uh, no. You know, they, they uh, were able to plug some rookies in last year. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. That means that doesn't mean we give up on those guys. You know, if the Rays, I think the Rays probably are have been a little better. The Dodgers at this point probably have better players in the minor league system. I think the Rays have probably moved a lot of those guys and graduated a lot of those guys. So uh, in terms of results, I think you're going to see the Dodgers looking better at player development, and but they certainly put a lot of resources into that. And that is, that's a place where, uh, <laughs> you know, I've seen stories about how major league owners want to limit how much money they put into, sorry, that was my phone. 
how nice. much money they put into like cabinet player development. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that is the opposite of what you should do. Uh, right. You know, I do like spending these guys money, but I, I feel like uh, that's a, that's a great place to get uh, not only players for the future, but thing you know, pieces that you can move for things that you need when you're contending. It just makes too much sense. And I don't think it's so outlandish of a price to pay that, that that's something anybody can afford. That's this is not a place where, you know, I can I guess I can see because of the the sticker shock why some owners might want to not want to sign some big name free agents. Player development is not a place I think where you should skimp. The Dodgers set a really good example there and the Rays did before them. For sure. Let's take a quick second. We'll talk about our friends at FanDuel. When we come back, uh, some twins, former twins in new places. We'll discuss that and give you the full lowdown. But first, a word from our friends. As the weather gets colder, the well, it's not really getting colder here in Minnesota, believe it or not, but the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. You're heading into week 15, so not that much time left. But right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. So if your team wins, it's $150. Bucks. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than now to get in on the action. The app is super duper easy to use, and there's a whole bunch of different, uh, like a wide range of betting options, including spreads, overs and unders, player props, you name it, they've got it. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Once again, right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. So if you want some misery mitigation, you can uh, bet against your team. Then you can't lose, right? Right, Dave Brown? If you we'll bet against Pete Rose, though, they might keep him out of the Hall of Fame. That's okay with me. I don't like Pete Rose. Um, but anyway, visit fanduel.com slash locked on, kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right. So we are back, and it is uh, the bullpen. We're going to talk about Tyler Malley. You got any thoughts on Tyler yeah. Malley? No, um, so two years, 22 million with the Rangers, so defending World Series champions. Um, they're gonna they have a lot of money tied up in injury slash injured pro injury prone slash injured pitchers. Um, that's not to say that throwing money at the problem is an issue, but I think what the Twins were hoping for was more efficiency with how they spend this budget and thus two years at $11 million per on average. Doesn't make a lot of sense. But by the same token, it sounds like via KSTP's Darren Wolfson, the Twins were never that interested in bringing him back. So any hand-wringing that we've seen over – not bringing back Tyler Malley, which to me is shocking because I don't know that you could find a single person who liked Tyler Malley um, on Twitter at any point this season. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't bother me that much that he's out of here. Um, the The worst way to justify the trade was to make another mistake. And I think two years and 22 million for the twins where they are right now would have been a mistake. Well, maybe for him, maybe that specific player. Yes. Uh, but I think it is a mistake to uh, dive into free agency one year, have kind of a, a mixed result, and then have that scare you away because that's not how it's yeah. going to work, you know, especially when you're in a position where you want to be continue to be a contender. And, you know, I don't – as you know, the Tigers are making some strides, the Guardians are going backwards, uh, the Royals appear to be making some strides, but they're very far back. The White mm-hmm. Sox, nobody knows exactly what it is they're doing. Um, this is a division for the Twins to take. You know, they've got their playoff victory under their belt. They've got some ghosts, uh, you know, excommunicated. That's not exactly the word, is it? Uh, the past couple of years, right? Um, you know, I they it's I think it's a it's a good time to be aggressive. They they obviously uh, if it's the uh, the local TV uncertainty or whatever. They're, mm-hmm. they're hedging their bets there. I think, uh, yeah, maybe you don't want Tyler Malley back. And it is interesting to see the Rangers go out and it, look, it looks like they found an inefficiency. I don't know if, if it's really going to work, but 
these guys who have an injury history and, uh, you know, you get them back a little bit later to bring them in and, and see what happens. And um, so maybe not Tyler, but, uh, you know, following up with a, an aggressive move, pick a guy you want and get him. Yeah. Uh, I, I still would be for that, for, for the twins, for their rotation. Yeah, no. Well, and um, yeah, I just, I don't think it was going to be a fit budget wise. I just wonder too about the vibes because the, the way they seem so flat about interest in bringing him back. Um, I don't know, just kind of striking to me. Uh, but there was a mailbag column in the athletic. Actually, you know we'll, we'll, we'll transition to that in just a second. Jack Flaherty got $14 million from the Detroit Tigers. I wouldn't have touched that if I was the twins. Where do you stand on Jack Flaherty? Because, um, you know, certainly there's a possibility to get back to the level he was at before. But we've seen guys like this just completely peter out. Uh, someone who comes to mind, especially, is like Dylan Bundy, where, um, you know, you have big expectations and a good start to a career. Um, maybe Bundy not as good as Flaherty, but I just don't know how much more you can expect at this point out of Flaherty after a few negative seasons. The, uh, you know, not to uh, be uh, repetitive, but uh, the, the shoulder – uh, scares me, you know, the, as a, yep. you know, as a, as a mechanism, um, you know, for pitchers, that's kind of, uh, you, know, you really got to show me that you're, you know, you're back from uh, shoulder issues, you know, elbows uh, also risky, but there's just so much power there uh, in the shoulder and so much, uh, you know, that if it, sure. once they're damaged, it's hard to say what you're going to have when they come back. Yeah. Elbows, it's a little clearer. You know, you can have a bounce back guy. Uh, you know, Bundy's a guy, you know, Bundy's, yeah. a, 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 you know, a back of the rotation type pitcher, um, you know, maybe for a team like the Royals, maybe more like a mid rotation. But yeah, I mean, I think there's a there's a chance maybe they'll they'll bring him back. But if they're you know, if they're lukewarm about um, Tyler, you know, I don't know if they want to you know go that way again with Bundy Flaherty just uh, you know I, I I didn't I would not have expected the twins in a million years to go near 14 million I don't think you know God bless him I hope he has a great year but I wouldn't touch that either yeah um now uh so yeah Aaron Gleeman had a good mailbag in the athletic with some points that I wanted to touch on um how farmer likely to be moved I don't think that's anything too surprising twins Flush with infield types. How do you feel about the old, it's not a bait and switch, but like tender and trade. It's not against the rules or anything, but. Um, that sounds like some NBA stuff right there, Brandon. Like sign and trade. Yeah. yeah that's... Um, with that said though, I, I'm just not sure what the marketplace looks like for Kyle Farmer. One year closer to free agency, one year older when he brought back, I think it was like Casey Legumina, a, a decent 40 man roster pitcher. Right. Um, you know, it's probably going to be a similar return. So we'll see what happens, I guess. My first thought about Farmer was that he was insurance against other moves that maybe they wanted to make, but weren't sure that they could uh, yep. you know, cover themselves at a couple different positions on the infield to have a, a guy who did fine last year, was good in the clubhouse. Um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I've seen the stories about, well, he seems like a guy, you know, that they've they've tendered and then it looks like they're going to trade him. And I, I, my thought is I'm not I agree with you. I'm not sure exactly what the market is. And it's not, you know, you know, any anybody can be traded. It's just uh, maybe there is something out there in a deal where uh, the positions match up. You know, it's not like you're going to uh, get any huge surprises or win any trades with a. A yeah. great prospect in the uh, diamond in the rough for for farmer, but maybe you get somebody. I don't know if you get somebody in the bullpen. Uh, you know, you wait for injuries to come in spring training. People get short at certain positions, and you know, he's got a shortstop's resume. Those guys never go out of style, and he was nearly a league average hitter last year, a little bit below. So, uh, yeah, you know, he'll have some value. I wouldn't expect like a huge return but you might get a piece that fits better for the coming roster than uh farmer does at this time. And it, it also, like we've said before, it depends on 
what other pieces that they, you know, Solano's not coming back apparently, or is uh, it doesn't seem like it. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts here with Farmer. Uh, it, it's possible that, you know, I, I don't know, like, if it's going to be a huge return, but you might get something that fits better for the coming roster than him. Alex Kirilov looks like he is predominantly a first baseman slash DH moving forward. Uh, another thing gleaned from Gleeman. Um, with that said, they're still going to have to hedge in, of course, center field, but I think two at first base. Do you think it makes sense to try find a player to do both, or do you probably need a player for each spot just because of the volatility of the players involved? Yeah, it probably depends on the size of the contract and the players you're looking at. You know, if you're looking at somebody who can cover both places. The nice thing about the Twins that we've talked about before is that they have uh, some versatile players who really showed them last year that they are, you know, major league caliber types. So you you might see uh, kind of a, a mix and match. Um, you know, they're, they're not going to go out and, and give a guy a hundred million dollars, but uh, yep. it, it depends on how expensive the, the new guys are. You know, if, if Gallo's on his way out, you know, who's coming in uh, and that kind of thing. So there's lots of different things. You know, how's Jose Miranda's shoulder, you know? That's what I was going to say. Don't sleep on Jose Miranda. Right. So there's there's lots of things, you know, it, it sort of goes back to Farmer. It gives them, you know, the, he's another piece that they have that uh, can either serve them again in the upcoming season or maybe a move him. There's, I just, I have the feeling that, um, the, the Twins roster is going to look maybe not like radically different than it does now, but I think you're going to see three or four significant changes with guys who are bench slash platoon starters, and things are going to look different going forward depending on how markets shake out. Would you have any interest in Manuel Margot as a flip from the Dodgers? And how about this? I don't know if this would make sense. Uh, Al Farmer for Manuel Margot. I don't know if the Dodgers need an infielder. He's he's been a Dodger before. Yeah, um, maybe. Uh, you know that depends on injury they status have all too. So I don't know what they want to do at short, but yeah, I don't think. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I I think that's that's possible. I don't know if if that is the deal to make, but uh, I would feel better about the Twins outfield if Margot were out there. I I saw one. Yeah. A person say that now oh, maybe this uh, this this glass now deal as it has been announced or has been rumored isn't going to happen because the Do- you know the Dodgers would rather have Randy or Rosarena than uh, Manuel Margot. Well, no kidding. But yeah, um, yeah I, Margot the last couple of years has, hasn't been hasn't really jumped out at you. But um, I, I'd be interested in something like that, sure. And that although I don't know if Margot is a go in center. It, you know, he might be more of a right fielder at this point. I don't think he's turned 30 yet. I could be wrong about that. He's 29. He's 29. So, but it seemed like he slipped a little bit on defense last year, but he didn't ha- exactly have a, a huge amount of, you know, it's not like he played 162 games. So I'm not sure if he is viable in center field or not. That's a question I have about him. There's the twin scouts would know more than I. What do you make with the now this is probably an unsubstantiated rumor but accounts such as this have had some luck but um there is a rumor going around that the twins have checked in on dh types like jd martinez um jorge soler does anybody like that of interest to you i mean yeah because uh from a right-handed power standpoint that's a good place for them to go. And, yeah. uh, you know, DH and uh, the corner outfield, at least left field, assuming we're, they're keeping Max in right, is kind of a fluid situation. And, you know, Kirilov is a guy you don't necessarily want to see in the lineup every day against left-handers. So, right. uh, you know, that would be – I would absolutely be checking in on those guys. You know, Martinez really you don't want to see in the outfield. Uh, maybe some of the other guys who are, are possible have a little bit more flexibility than him, but he's still, you know, he's a, uh, 
an amazing hitter is I mean that's not a great uh, adjective but he's still you know he puts up 25 percent or 30 percent or more better than the the the, av- the league average hitter every year so uh you know he's he, he was never a good defensive player and mm-hmm. now he's really not good but um as far as a stick in the lineup that would be great I, and uh a good personality for the clubhouse a guy who t- gets along he's a survivor i remember when the the uh, the astros like cut him yep. you know at the end of one spring training and then it was like what uh, people didn't know what they were doing it's like uh, th- this was right before the astros got smart i guess and he's had a great you know 12 year career ever since that happened however many years ago feels a little like uh uh nelson cruz yeah story, or like a nelson cruz um what is it called your your hero story or whatever right yeah it would be uh i think that's a pretty good comparison nelson finally hanging him up this year jd's not there yet but he uh, just repeatedly, I think he's maybe the last couple of years gotten off to a, a slower start, but uh, he gets the hang of it quickly. He's, uh, you know, they, people talk about uh, professional hitters. and I think they mean like, you know, some kind of Dave Hansen, Dave Maggot and left-handed bat off yep. the bat. But J, JD's a, a professional power hitter. He's uh, He knows how to get on base. Uh, you know, he's, he's good in a group. He would, uh, he fills a need. I like that a lot, uh, even though you're, uh, boxed in a little bit on defense. Yeah, no, no question about that. Uh, rumor twins may also be interested in Frankie Montas or James Paxton. Maybe not necessarily a rumor, but just kind of connecting the dots by Gleeman. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but there was a where Frankie meme when the twins were looking for pitching. And I think they ended up, that might've been when they traded for, uh, it was before he got traded to the Yankees. Cause then he got hurt. Yeah. And it was a mess. It was probably before Malley, but I'm not remembering exactly quite right. Is Montes um, a shoulder too? Does he? Yeah, have a- I mean it's it's tricky. Also, by the way, I don't see Soler being an option because he's going to want a multi year deal, and they're not going to give a DH a multi year deal. Um, you could anyway. play Soler. I mean, it would be a little scary, but it isn't like playing JD Martinez. You put him in left field. Yeah, I would, I would maybe do that. And- You're not blocking a guy like Matt Walner for that. I mean, you could mix and match with him because it's a righty lefty platoon but i don't know i i think it's gonna be a one-year aging guy like jd martinez for 14 million or something like that yeah maybe i think uh, maybe closer to 20 for those guys and okay it gets to be a little scary i know but it's all right twins it's uh it's it's not a big deal it's just a little inflation uh you know i i could see I could see both those guys pulling a two-year deal. At maybe JD Martinez just because of his defense, but I, I, this, you know, I don't know how old is Soler. He's not. He's is, is he thirty? You know. So oh, take a look. I want to say he was born in like the early nineties. Yeah. No, I hope to be born in the yeah, early nineties. He was born in. Uh, he'll be thirty-two before the season starts, uh, February twenty-fifth. I think he's earned a. a, a I don't, you know, three-year deal, maybe not. Out. He opted out of a one-year option, so he's going to want more money or more years. Yeah, yeah. He's probably, I mean, heck, the Marlins should be interested in bringing him back. I know it's not a Marlins yeah. show. I know some people think, like, the Twins' new M hats look like Marlins, but it's not. And maybe that's, that you lure him, you lure a, a Solaire with the M hat. It's like, hey, you see this? It looks like where you came from. Nice and sunny. You like what you see? Yeah. 45 but, degrees today. Yeah. Was it? It's, uh, it's 37 right now as we're recording. So, yeah, it was mighty nice up here. So, I you don't know. what to do with yourselves when it's December and it's so warm? No, but we don't know what to do with ourselves when it's December and it's cold because Ice for whatever reason, the first snow fa- flies and we're just right clueless. Um, so, yeah, I, I could see Frankie or Paxton. I'm not sure if I'm sold on Frankie with the shoulder, but I do like him as a pitcher when he's right. Paxton's results last year were encouraging. And, he, and he's uh, he's Canadian. So, I mean, uh, what's better than Minnesota if you're Canadian? Maybe Toronto, obviously, but um, hey. Right. No, I think, I mean, that's a guy. Uh, we'll, we'll see about how expensive he is. I sort of like uh, – uh, he, that's a guy that a lot of contenders probably should be interested in. And you know what? Uh, didn't this ha- didn't happen in Minnesota 
Was it in Minnesota where the bird attacked him? Where the yep, eagle opening day? Oh, 20, maybe 17. Yeah, maybe 18. It was something like that with Seattle. Uh, and everybody, know. is oh, that yeah. a deal killer? Does that, you know, does he have flashbacks about that? I don't know if that is target field is so lovely. Uh, but, but I mean, on the other hand, uh, a bird attacking me at target field would make me not want to go there. And he's Canadian and it's the eagle, like the bald eagle. Like that's. Right. There's some layers to this, yeah. There's some um, kind of political agenda these birds have against James Paxson. He I would guess. love, though, Minnesota's trying to get, some people are trying to get the uh, a commuter train to go from uh, the Twin Cities to Duluth, which is just like, and then from Duluth you can like fall over and you're in Canada. Yeah. I, I think, think if the Twins could back that and show Paxton that they're interested in getting people, shuttling them north. Yeah. He like, oh. well, I'll, you know, some nice, nice long weekend, and I'm up there if I'm not pitching. If you're not at the cottage, you come to the ball game. Do not go uh, to the cottage. Yeah, I think Yunjin Ryu would be another good uh, target for them. No um, idea how he is physically, really. Right, and that's but, the whole thing. But on a one that now you're talking one year deal with lots of incentives, and yeah. uh, another guy who uh, has come over and and done really well. Really good reputation in the clubhouse, too. That's yeah. a guy who can get along with everybody. And over a six-month season, eight months, nine months, if you go to the playoffs, uh, you know, I can, I can see him and, and Correa uh, being fast friends. I don't know. And, and, and other people, too, that maybe you wouldn't expect. There's a there's a plus to uh, Hyunjin Ryu that uh, is, uh, it goes beyond pitching. He's a good personality to have around, so I've heard. Well, that's all I need to hear. Uh, so we'll see what happens again. And we've been playing this song and dance all off season. And I feel bad for that. By the way, I am aware that Dave is frozen on the screen here. So there he's back. Were you sorry? I, I was uh, just so deep in thought about Minnesota public transit that I didn't realize I was gone. But you could hear me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. You, made, you made some good points. Um, you know, some of them are a little sketchy, but it. We'll let it ride. Um, but, yeah, that's all I have for this episode. Uh, Dave Brown, we're going to come back and talk on Friday, if you have time, about uh, some pitchers, I think, on the 40-man slash. Uh, we're going to do some report cards, basically speaking, um, which is, I think, right up your alley based on some of the work you've done recently. So, Yeah, I've been substitute teaching so uh, in the Kansas City area school district, so I'm, I'm ready to grade these players on a similar curve to these kids and these, these kids are, they're good kids. Regular so, dead poet society over here. Well, hopefully th that ending is not great. No, it's not what we want, well, but uh, maybe the, the, the more spirited, you know, uh, the rousing, Oh, captain, my captain. Yeah. We'll, we'll do some of that. Well, we're going to count on it, but for now he's answered Dave Brown. I'm Brandon Warren and you've been hanging out with locked on twins and we'll see ya. Tomorrow night.